Today's date is May 12th, 2020. I think it's the 12th, it seems like all the days are molding together these days, but uh, I haven't uh, done an update for a while now, I think since March, so I thought it'd be a good opportunity to just provide an update showing how things are going here in the greenhouse in Springville, Utah. So uh, I'm on the inside of the greenhouse, obviously. Everything we've been working on since the last update has been here on the inside. So um, got through the winter well, uh, maintained temperature largely above 50 degrees, which was, uh, which was our goal. Um, and now as we're moving into warmer weather, we've had temperatures outside. I think the high I saw last week was around 87 and we've uh, been able to maintain temperature in here in the 80s without any trouble. We'll get up uh, much warmer than that, so we'll keep you posted on how, how we're able to manage the temperature in here as we get into summer, but so far so good. The first update I'll probably share would be on the aquaponics down here on the east end. We have been working on this forever, it seems. And uh, it's large, largely completed. We're still doing some tunes, tunings and dialings. Um, I've been running it today and turned it off so that the noise from the circulating water wouldn't interfere with the video. But basically this tank here is about a four feet wide by 12 foot long by five foot deep tank. Uh, we used four by four uh, lumber around the perimeter. And on the inside of that, we did some uh, some framing additionally for additional wall support there. You can see that right there. Um, and this window here is a polycarbonate window. We went with polycarbonate rather than glass because it's extremely impact resistant. And I also wanted to screw this into the wall. And um, so we put this window up against a sealant and then we went in about every four to six inches with a screw that had a rubber and metal washer and it worked really well allowed us to get uh, really tight there because the window obviously the water pressure would put a lot of pressure on that window so i wanted to have that pressure before we filled it with water but uh so that's the window you can see some added support here with these posts and some framing up on top just to get as much support as we could on this thing it's not engineered. We've just been watching YouTube videos for 18 months trying to figure out how to do this. Uh, we have a plastic insert that we ordered. I can't remember the name of the company, but I'll post a link below. They literally built this per our specs and shipped it to us. It's a really durable material here. And um, I don't have any concerns about uh, leaks with this. And so the way we have it set up, this picks up water from the bottom of the tank with this two inch pipe. Um, comes into a T so that we can break suction if the pump ever turns off so that it won't drain the tank. And then it overflows from the tank into this solid waste filter. And the idea here is that the solid waste settles on the bottom and we can pick it up this little drain here, valve here, so that we can clean it out every now and again, fill up a bucket and put the solid waste on the plants and trees here in the greenhouse. And the solid waste filter then gravity flows into our four grow beds. We have a valve over each one so we can manage the flow with the goal being to fill and drain these about every 30 to 40 minutes. And uh, we have bell siphons in each of these grow beds. And we build a little custom one. This is an external bell siphon. And we use some clear polycarbonate tubing so that we could actually show how the process of filling and draining works. And we've used it. It actually does work, surprisingly. Um, and these grow beds, each, as they drain through the bell siphons, they drain into this sump and this sump has a pump in the bottom of it and that pump runs continuously and uh, the water comes into the tank it fills the tank and the process starts anew and just circulates all the time when it's on 
So that's the quick tour of the aquaponics. I'll do an update at some point when we have fish in there and have it up and running. We're going to build a vertical grow system above it. We need uh, to reduce the light coming into the tank and that'll help. Other than that, um, quick update on the water. We've now, uh, through the high water portion of spring and our water is now heading down, which is good. So this little lazy stream we put in has done a good job of managing this high water we get during the winter and early spring. It never got above this little lazy stream once we put it in. And uh, so that's managed the water well. The other thing we've done is we've put a mulch and compost on the floor here in the greenhouse. Um, I've been mulching around the yard with leaves and branches and then I purchased some mushroom compost and Nutrimix at a local nursery. And uh, over time I like to build this up with a few inches as uh, just a way to not only help with weeds but to build up the quality of the soil. And since we've had it here, we haven't had uh, too many weeds to worry about on the floor. We have plenty of weeds in our grill beds where we haven't yet put uh, any material uh, like mulch to, to help. But uh, so that's the floor. We uh, put in three bee houses, one on the inside here and two on the outside, and ordered some bees from Crown Bees. We ordered some uh, mason bees and uh, some leaf cutters. And um, they're in here every now and again, and they're outside. We've also had some bees coming in that are honeybees um, that we find in the trees outside. But uh, anything to help pollinate. We also purchased some ladybugs, and uh, we've got an aphid problem here where they are just getting after our leaves. So the ladybugs are in here working and really helping with the, uh, with the aphids. Other than that, Maybe update you on how the trees and plants are doing. This is the east end of the greenhouse and uh, this is a cod shell variety mango and it shipped kind of rough but uh, has uh, since recovered it uh, through all of its leaves and has grown new leaves and has even grown a, a mango on it. Um, we have two other varieties of mangoes. We've got a diamond right here, and this has also got some, uh, some mangoes just starting on it. And um, this is a zill variety mango, a smaller, younger tree. No fruit on it. I don't think we'll have any fruit on it this year. And we put a guava tree on the far east end here. This is a star fruit tree. We've got some citrus. This is a mandarin variety. You can see it's got some fruit on it already. This is a Washington navel. We get some oranges off of this in February. This is a blood orange. And it's actually got some fruit on it. This is a lime. It's got fruit on it as well. One thing I'd show, on, in this greenhouse we put hog panels along the north wall so that we could grow peas and beans. We've got beans down on this end, we've got peas down on the other end. And they're doing great. Pomegranates over here. We've got two planted here. We've got pomegranate growing uh, fairly early for pomegranate season. I think I grow these outside as well. Not here in Utah, but elsewhere. This is a fig tree, and uh, the fig tree's been doing great. Also has a lot of fruit on it. Got potatoes on the ground. Thought we'd try some potatoes just to see how they do in a greenhouse. This is an avocado. Avocado's a bit of a gamble here in the greenhouse, I guess as many of these other varieties are, but you never know till you try. Lemon variety. This is a Eureka lemon. This tree has grown a lot since we've had it. And it's got a lot of fruit on it. We've been uh, we've begun taking these off every here and there. Bananas and a couple more varieties of citrus over here. 
up in the grow beds. Got some leafy greens, some onions planted. See the dragon fruit's doing really well. Some tomatoes, some okra, artichoke. I've been trying some pineapple. We'll see how that does. Tomatillos and uh, tomatoes. I've started to string these up because they are really going. And I like this string. It's working really well to grow some of these taller varieties here along the south wall. It helps filter the light in the summer, which will help us with heat. But uh, plenty of tomatoes. This is a sun sugar variety. These things never make it to the salad bowl. We eat them straight off of the plant. More tomatoes. Let's see, we've got some broccoli ready to go. Got some peppers over here. Everything's doing really well. Over here, a um, lot of squash over here. Squash is doing really well. And uh, in fact, we've got um, squash already on many of these plants, different varieties, zucchinis, cucumbers, uh, yellow squash. We can put a pumpkin in here just to see how it would do in the greenhouse. But that's kind of a real quick tour of how things are going here. Again, as we get into summer, we'll, we'll be really focused on the temperature and keeping this thing hopefully below 90. That's the goal. But um, that is pretty much it. We've grown out here, put some melons over there, as well as a couple of other citrus varieties. Uh, one thing I'll say, you haven't heard the, um, the fans come on. They should come on. They're coming on sporadically. But these vents, we've obviously taken the insulation off on the vents, and we've got solar sticks on uh, the interior vents. You can see one on the east end. There's one on the west end. The other vents open when the fans go on. And um, we would much rather not have any vending here whatsoever. We would much rather just circulate the geothermal air, which uh, circulates through that pump right there. We've got two different sets of pipes in here that uh, use geothermal air, and then one set of vent pipes over in the other corner there. Um, but if it gets hot in here, we're happy to use fans and vents. We would much rather keep it uh, from getting too hot in here and vent it while we hopefully mature this greenhouse to the point where at some point it can handle the temperature's just fine without needing to use fans and vents tied to the outside air. So that's the goal, but um, the, when these greenhouses are new, boy, they can get really warm on the inside. So we'll do what we need to do to maintain temperature between 50 and 89. So anyway, that's a quick tour. Let me know if you have any questions or suggestions. We're learning with everyone else, and we love to uh, know what you guys think, especially in regards to anything you think we can do better.